Welcome to the training video for the ADM Superslide. In this training video, you will learn how to set up and tear down the ADM Superslide. This specific slide is 85 feet long and 18 feet tall to the platform. Before starting to remove parts from the ride to begin the setup, take note at how the parts are packed and strapped on the trailer. This may save you quite a bit of time and headache when it comes to packing up the slide. Find a mostly flat area to set the trailer, leaving at least 60 feet of flat ground off the back end of the trailer for the removable slide sections. Using the stabilizer jacks on the front of the trailer, lift the trailer off the truck and then pull the truck out of the way. Once the truck is moved, lower the front of the slide so the entire trailer is semi-level. Remove the leveling jack arms and legs from the storage position at the front of the trailer, but keep the pins with the legs as you will need this for installation. To start, we will only need two pairs of these legs, and we'll start at the back of the trailer. Assemble the two pieces of the leveling jacks together before inserting them in the sleeve on the trailer frame. Do this for both sides of the back end of the trailer. Do not put any wood under these jacks unless the ground is too soft to support the slide. Go to the front of the trailer and lower the stabilizer jacks, thus raising the front of the trailer. This will put pressure on the rear leveling jacks. When both leveling jacks in the rear of the trailer are firm, assemble and install the leveling jacks on the front of the trailer. This time, put as many blocks of wood underneath the leg as possible to reduce height loss in the front when the stabilizer jack is cranked up. Once the wood is underneath the legs, crank the stabilizer jacks up to lower the front of the trailer. Make sure the leveling jacks are firm on all four corners of the slide. Next, you'll need to start removing parts and pieces from the slide to continue assembly. For this specific slide, the fencing is mounted on the back of the trailer and must be taken off along with the fence racks before going much further in the installation process. At this point, almost all straps that hold parts down for transport can be removed as well. Most importantly, remove any pieces that are on the side of the slide which will eventually be lifted in the air and out of reach. Next, remove the lighting fixtures from the side of the trailer. These can be mounted and plugged in at any time. Make sure to align the right number on the lighting fixture with the right number on the bracket and pin it in place as shown here. Not all slides have the same lighting package, so this step will vary from slide to slide if applicable at all. Once all obstacles are out of the way, you'll need to swivel the outrigger legs into place. Remove the clevis pin that holds the outrigger leg in the transport position. Swivel the leg 90 degrees so that it is perpendicular to the slide. Repeat this step for the remaining three outrigger legs. The second component to the outrigger legs is the leg extension with a sand shoe. These can be found at the front of the trailer next to the leveling jacks. Remove the extensions from the transport bracket, but keep the pin along with the extension as you'll need it during the installation process. The pin placement is best on the top holes of the extension for maximum width resulting in the most stability. However, if space doesn't allow for it, you can place the pins in other holes making the width of the slide installation more narrow. Slide the extension into the outrigger leg until the pin stops it from sliding in any further. Make sure that the pin is centered in the extension so the outrigger leg isn't resting on the R-pin as shown here. Chains connect the outrigger legs to each other in an X pattern and can generally be found in the bins at the front of the trailer. Before the slide is lifted into the operating position, you'll need to attach the chains to the upper parts of the outrigger legs. The chains should be using something similar to a quick connect or a shackle to hold the chains on the top tab of the outrigger leg. Repeat this step for the remaining three outrigger legs. The next steps require you to walk the steps to the top of the slide while in the transport position, but before you go up to the platform, you'll want to release the canopy frames from the ground along with any straps to secure signs or other components for travel at the top of the slide. 
Using a ladder, climb up to the stairs of the slide and walk up to the top. You'll need to bring the canvas for the canopy structure along with any tools or pins that are needed to complete the installation. When at the top of the platform, remove the pins holding the hinged canopy structure and swing them into place. Replace the pin to hold it in the upright position. Then connect the three canopy trusses onto the hinged canopy uprights as shown here. Secure the trusses in place using R pins. Once the canopy structure is in place, install the canvas over the structure and secure it into place using the ties. Next, lift the marquee sign into place and secure it with the bolts or pins provided. This completes the work at the top of the platform and the installers can come back down. At this time or any time during installation, you can hook up power to the slide. This slide only takes 110 volts and runs very low amps, especially during operation. Before raising the slide, it's best for the installers to walk around the slide to make sure everything is ready and clear for the slide to be raised. Once that check is complete, turn on the breaker that powers the hydraulic motor. Let the motor warm up for 15 to 30 seconds and then begin to raise the slide. Raise the slide by pulling the hydraulic flow control lever. As the slide is raising, the outriggers should slide on their own, especially on pavement, but it is a good idea to have another installer walk around the slide while it's raising into position to ensure that everything is moving safely. Once the slide has reached its full height, turn off the breaker that powers the hydraulic motor. At this point, or at any point during the installation, you can turn on the breaker that powers the ride's lighting. Next, you'll need to remove the slide pieces from the base of the trailer. It is highly recommended to have multiple people help with this step. Carefully lift the slide piece and carry it to the end of the trailer. The removable slide piece has a lip on one of the ends. This lip will attach to the trailer and butt up to the other slide pieces that are permanently fixed to the trailer. Place the slide into place and carefully set it down. Next, remove the two flat runner sections one at a time and place them under the previous slide piece. To ensure that the removable slide piece is sturdy, slide the support arms out of the rear end of the trailer and use the stabilizer jack to eliminate any play in the slide giving it full support. Please note there is very little pressure on the jacks during installation as it's only there as a support and not necessarily holding up a lot of the weight during installation, only during use. Now it's time to connect the chains on the outrigger legs. Until these chains are connected and tightened, the slide is not secure. This is done after the slide pieces are removed to reduce the risk of scratching or chipping the removable slide pieces. Connect the chains to the outrigger bar directly across from the other, forming an X pattern. The chains are connected to the long multi-hole tab using a quick connect or a shackle. Once all four chains are connected, tighten the chains using chain binders. When binding the chains, there should be somewhat of resistance in order for the chains to be truly tight. If there is no resistance, replace the hook of the binder higher on the chains and try again. Repeat this step for the remaining chains. In order to run the slide, it is required to install some sort of carpet at the end of the slide. In this case, the installers are using artificial turf. Slide the carpet underneath the last flat runner section just enough to hold the carpet in place. Next, install the guardrails on the removable slide section. Guardrails will vary from slide to slide, but regardless of the rail type, make sure that it is fully secured and there is no transition gap between the slide wall and the guardrail. Once the guardrails are installed, it's now time to install the steps. Using the two support rods, table the platform that connects the removable stairs to the permanent stairs. Once completed, place the removable stair section into place and bolt them securely. Once secured, install both railings on either side of the stairwell. Besides fencing, the installation of the slide is now complete. For the slide surface, you will absolutely need to keep that slick. We recommend using tire shine or pledge on the slide surface, but for warning, a little goes a long way. To prepare the slide for transport, first start with the chains. 
Remember that once the chains are released from the bindings, the slide is no longer secured. Remove the bindings and place them in the storage bin. Then, remove the shackles from the lower tabs on the outrigger leg. Pull the chain back across the trailer base so no chains are crossing. This is done first for easy access to the trailer base. Next, remove and disassemble the stairs, starting with the railing first and then the stairs. Store these on the back of the trailer as shown here. Next, remove the guardrails from the removable slide section and set them off to the side. These cannot be stowed yet because they mount on the lifted part of the trailer. Next, remove and store the two flat runner sections on the base of the trailer. In between the two layers, put some sort of protective material so the sections do not get scratched up. On the top flat runner section, drape the outdoor carpet over it with the soft side facing down. This will protect the flat runner sections from getting damaged by the removable slide section. Next, crank up the stabilizer jacks on the support arms and push the arms back into the trailer frame. After the support arms are out of the way, carry the removable slide section to the base of the trailer and place it on top of the two flat runner sections. Be sure to lift and not push the slide section as it will move the carpet layer protecting the flat runner. Again, it is recommended to use multiple people for this step. At this point, it is easiest to secure as much of the parts on the trailer base as possible while the slide is still in the upright position. Next, it's time to lower the slide. Before lowering the slide, do a walk around to make sure it is safe to bring the slide down to the transport position. Once clear, push the hydraulic flow control lever to lower the slide. You do not need the motor on during this process. Slow and steady is best when lowering the slide. If on grass, you may need to position multiple people around the slide to hold the outrigger legs up slightly so they slide as the slide comes down. The sand shoes typically slide fairly easily on the pavement, but it's still best to make sure someone has an eye on them to make sure they are all moving. After the slide is down and completely in the transport position, remove the chains from the outrigger legs and store them for transport. Next, remove the extensions from the outrigger legs and store them at the front of the trailer. These extensions may be numbered, so make sure the extension number matches up with the according number on the transport bracket. Next, unplug all of the light fixtures as they will be in the way of the outrigger legs. Swivel the outrigger legs back to the transport position and pin them into place for all four outrigger bars. Once all of the outrigger bars are secured for transport, remove all of the light fixtures and secure them to their transport brackets. Once again, these may be numbered, so make sure the fixtures are aligned to the proper number on the transport brackets. Store and secure the ladder for transport. Next, store and secure the guardrails to the side of the slide frame. Next, climb to the slide platform to disassemble the sign and canopy. Start by removing the canvas, folding it up, and storing it in the canvas bag. Next, remove the bolts that hold the sign in place. Then carefully lower it to the transport position and strap it into place. Remove the truss for the canopy structure and secure the trusses in the platform. Finally, fold down the hinged canopy frames and secure on the bottom. Don't forget to replace the pin for transport as well. At the bottom of the slide, remove and store the support rods holding the stair platform and secure that by flipping the stabilizer jack on the support arm upside down. Strap the arms, jack, and platform into place. Next, install the fence brackets and then the fencing. Once all fence is installed, strap it down. Using the stabilizer jacks in the front of the trailer, lift the nose of the trailer up and remove the blocks of wood and leveling jacks. Once removed, lower the front of the trailer to loosen the leveling jacks at the back of the trailer. Remove the leveling jacks on the back of the trailer and bring them to the front for storage. Store the leveling jack arms first and then secure with the pin. Then install the jack feet. This will take a staggered installation with the first and third going first, then the second and fourth. Stow the wood and secure it for transport in the chain bin. Hook up the truck and properly secure the slide, 
and the teardown is complete. Thanks for watching this training video of the ADM Superslide.